So what is social media? Honestly, I think that's a really good question because I think it's very misunderstood because when you look at the core of what social media is, it's a media. It's a form of media. Like newspaper is a form of media. TV is a form of media. Um, And social now is a form of media, but it's a very unique form of media because it's socially driven. You know, organ- like when I look at newspapers and TVs and you know, radios, that's, that's organized media. And when you look at social media, it's, I would go as far as say it's disorganized media. Because, you know, the organization of TV uh, and newspapers, they have, an, they have a very specific agenda, you know, which is to, in most cases, make money. Whereas in the social space, the agenda is just to be social and to share information. And so for me, understanding that distinction is huge because it is a socially driven media. And when you try and bring in traditional media concepts, aka marketing, direct response, advertorial, okay, into a social environment, it's not gonna align, you know, because every environment has its own culture. In the culture of TV, we're used to direct response media. In the culture of radio, we're used to direct response media. It's conditioned. In the social context, that is not, the, the culture with TV, the culture of radio, that's very strong. But in the culture of social environment, it's like having your friend rock up at a birthday party and try and sell you something. You know, we, it, it doesn't fit, it, it doesn't jive, it's out of rapport with the situation. And so to me, social media, is literally the it is the it's the it's the maximum point of evolution right now from a media perspective, and it is completely to me it's a level of organized chaos, which is organized at a cultural level, but ultimately it's nothing more than a jumble of quantum soup. So for business owners, tying it back to them, yeah, why does social media matter to them, and what like, what are potentially the biggest pain points for them? Look, the reason that social media matters is the, is, the, is the reason that any form of media mattered at any point in time because it's all about the attention. You know, the reason that TV dominated when it did is because of it, that's where the attention was. You know, the reason that radio dominated when it did was because that's where the attention was, and the reason that social media is now dominating is because that is where the attention is. And for a business owner. We have to adapt to the media from a communication standpoint, otherwise we don't get any attention. Or the attention that we do get, do get will be the wrong type of attention. So the, the big question is, is how do we as businesses adapt to a socially driven co- communication, in, a socially driven communications environment where most of our toolboxes you know, haven't been built for that landscape, hasn't been built for that terrain. It's almost like we're now taking, let's call it you know, a sports car, which is, you know, let's call it, well, actually, no, I wouldn't even call it a sports car, but let's say that TV and radio were sports cars, but social's not a, social's not a, a, t- a typical racetrack. Social is, you know, it's, it's, it's a different type of terrain. So it'd be the equivalent of going, I understand the, the, social, the, the, the traditional marketing terrain, or I understand the traditional TV terrain, I know the track, but you start taking the social terrain, it's a completely different terrain. It'd be like taking a Ferrari and putting it in, on a four-wheel drive track. You're just not gonna get traction. And so we need to not only adapt our communication, in many respects, we need to a- adapt our vehicle to be able to you know, suit the terrain that we're taking you know, ourselves into, our businesses into. So biggest pain points, so business owners, if you work a lot with them. Biggest pain points when it comes to social media yeah. is understanding how to utilize the tool. You know, it's, and it, it, imagine this, imagine you know, you're, you, you've just turned 15, you've just got your learner's permit, and for your birth, you haven't had any, any, any education on how to drive a car and for your birthday your dad gives you a Ferrari. How's that going to work out? You know, because mo- no one's been taught how to use the, the, the medium. So as a result, it, to reflect on what I just said, the pain point is people are taking traditional media concepts, traditional marketing concepts, and they're trying to execute them in an untraditional environment. And so the biggest pain point is people are trying to do stuff in social, but it's not working. And so as a result, they're buying into the bandwagon of, oh, social doesn't work. And it's like, well, it's not that social doesn't work. You're just using the wrong style of communication. You're using the wrong vehicle to communicate. You're using the wrong communication strategy in general. You know, you're trying to sell to an audience that doesn't want to sell. They want to socialize. You're trying to sell to an audience that doesn't want to, you know, be sold to. They want to be entertained. They want to, you know, they want to be made to laugh. They want to be made to cry. And that's just, that's not traditional marketing. With the people who think it's not for them or like they don't adapt, they don't take hold of this opportunity, what happens to them? We see this with every iteration of industry. Like whenever there's a, a massive disruption in any industry, you know, going from the agricultural um, age to the industrial age to the information age, like with every disruption, those businesses that don't adapt, they die. 
it's it's the it's the basis of evolution. We either evolve or we die. And as businesses, the 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 the, the life cycle is just much shorter. You know, as a species, we have a few generations before we can totally fuck it up. As a business, you can fuck up you know a business within a matter of weeks if you don't iterate and if you don't evolve with what's going on in the market. So the real pain point that we're seeing right now is I have never in my entire life seen so many businesses closing. The retail environment, right? Every single time you pick up the newspaper, you're reading about a major retail operator that is going under. The internet has been here for almost 20 years, 24 years. So it's not the internet, okay? And now we're seeing, I've never seen so many for sale signs or so many for lease signs when it comes to local businesses. So we're already in the midst of it, okay? All the economic indicators are there. We're just a little bit slow to catch up. And those people that don't fast track their ability to catch up, the writing is on the wall. You've been warned, okay? You've been warned. You know if you don't wear a fucking seatbelt, the chances of uh, injury or death are much higher if you have an accident. And if you don't use social media for your business, the chances of you not being here in 12 months to three years is very high, very high. This isn't a joke. This is for real. And lives depend... And this is the thing that really fires me up because we're not just talking about people's businesses. You've got to understand the, the ecosystem from which in businesses sit because within every single business, you've got an ecosystem that sits underneath that. You've got families, okay? You've got relatives. You've got, you've got whole families. You've got whole communities that in some cases are underpinned by a handful of these businesses. And if one or two or three of these businesses go down, we're not just talking about the effects on families. We're talking about the effects on communities. You know, we're talking about an issue, if it's not addressed, is going to have a, a, an impact far-reaching other than just, you know, the retail sector being impacted by online spending and e-commerce. Can you think of any specific, you mentioned like retail and like any that quickly share some stories, examples, like specifics? Look, the ones that come to mind is Blockbuster. You know, Blockbuster was the number one dominant force when it came to home entertainment or, or DVD home entertainment. And they were actually offered Netflix for $50 million dollars in the early stages. Netflix is now worth, I think it's 1.18 billion. Hey Siri, how much is Netflix worth? The market capitalization for Netflix is 133 billion. Blockbuster was offered Netflix to buy for $50 million. It's now worth 333 billion dollars and where's Blockbuster? You know, and that's just one example. But we're not just talking about the REITs because right now the focus is on retail and everyone's going, oh, it's, you know, retail suffering, you've got to go e-commerce. And I'm going, yeah, well, that's, that's one aspect. But the thing that's driving this online is where is the attention? The attention is what is driving the behavior. And right now, the attention is on social media. That attention is driving it to e-related you know, e businesses, which as a result is affecting our retail, our retail trade. Clicks from shared content are five times more likely to result in a, per, in a purchase. Okay? And how many times do you think you know, uh, we share a post that we just went and bought something from Harvey Norman, or we went and just bought something from a local retailer, versus if you just bought something on Amazon, okay, they actually give you the ability to share what you've just purchased on a social channel, versus you know you go down to the local shop and I just buy a chair, what are they gonna do, ask you to share it on social media? They could, but how are you gonna to innovate to that market? How are you going to iterate in a market that is constantly being disrupted? And how do you, in some cases, survive in an untraditional landscape? And this is something I wanna point out, because I don't wanna say this is doom and gloom for all sectors of retail, but what I'm saying is if you don't iterate and innovate and evolve very quickly, you're fucking gone. There's no question, it's no ifs or buts, it's just a question of when. You can survive, but you need to evolve quickly. You went through this yourself. You didn't know how to do it yourself, but mm -hmm. now you kind of seemingly it looks like you've mastered it. So how did you learn? I learned the same way that everyone else does. I made a lot of mistakes. But I, the reason that I learned is because I, I saw the same things. Like, to be fair, although we weren't in a decline, we were definitely stagnant. We, would, we had definitely plateaued and, and, and so had the industry. But all I did was I saw where the market was going. I looked at what people were doing who were actually making it work and I just copied them. It was not fucking rocket science. I didn't have, you know, the back door to anyone. Yes, I had the privilege of, you know, meeting Gary Vee in an event and he kicked my ass and that played a huge role. And not everybody has the opportunity to have Gary Vee kick their ass for 10 minutes at the back of the room. And for me, that was a huge, that was a huge moment. But again, I've got to ask the question, what's the alternative? If you don't, because for me, although 
the writing wasn't on the wall. If I innovated, the business was going to go out of business. I knew eventually something was going to change. But my question to you would be is if, if you knew the writing was on the wall, if you knew that you were going to be out of business in the next 18 months if you didn't evolve and iterate and you know, start using the social platforms, what would you do today that would be different from yesterday? So why don't you just hold on to it yourself? Like why are you sharing the blueprint? The, re the reason I'm sharing what it is that I do, the reason I'm sharing the blueprint is because there's plenty of room. You know, there's, like as an example, 6% of businesses on Facebook, 6% of Facebook pages, like business pages, actually advertise, which to me says right now there's an abundance of, and I'm not shocked by the ads that I do see. I'm shocked by the ads that I don't see. I don't see my local mechanic, dentist, masseuse, hairdresser, barber. I don't see these guys advertising. They should be. So I, I think... Although the writing is on the wall, there's still massive opportunity to be taken. But the reality is we're now competing in a world that is increasingly becoming noisier every single day. Back in 1993, the average, commercial, the average consumer received 5,000 commercial messages every single day. Now the average consumer is receiving 5,000 messages by 9 a.m. So only 6% of businesses advertise on Facebook. Huge opportunity, but you're now competing in a very noisy space. Albeit, even though 6% of businesses only advertise on Facebook, huge opportunity, it's still a very noisy market. And you've got to look for every opportunity you can get and take it in a moral and ethical way. Look, the best piece of advice that I can give anyone on social media is to understand this concept. We all live by this law in a social context of what's called the law of familiarity. And that which is familiar, we trust. And so social media gives us an avenue to build high levels of familiarity, not just with individuals, but also with markets. And so to me, the best piece of advice I could give you is understand that familiarity breeds trust and trust breeds sales. Trust breeds relationship, or trust breeds relationships, trust breeds sales, trust builds loyalty. And so for me, the fastest way to build your market, the fastest way to build your business is to start publishing content that makes you familiar, you know, makes you relatable. And in some cases, people are going, well, oh, my content's no good. And I can, in some cases, I can guarantee you content that's no good is going to be, in some cases, work better than content that is. Because as we're also discovering in social media, one of the biggest drivers, one of the biggest things that people look for in social media is authenticity. They're looking for things that are raw. They're looking for things that are real. They're looking for things that are genuine. You know, a high production value doesn't always necessarily equate to high levels of credibility and trust. Any specific tips on generating leads? Using social? When it comes to generating leads on social, where most people go wrong is they don't understand what a lead looks like on social. Because traditionally we've been taught that a lead is first name, last name, email address, maybe a phone number and a postal address. Whereas social has disrupted what a lead looks like now. And so what we've got to understand is a lead is generated to produce a conversation. The reason that we generate leads in any form of marketing media is to get a set of, uh, is to get data that we can then use to contact that person to engage in a conversation to build familiarity, trust and see rapport and ultimately desire to buy our products or services. So what we now understand is conversation is the new lead. And so when it comes to generating leads on social media, the first thing we've got to understand is 89% of businesses on social media don't respond to comments and direct messages. And every comment, every direct message is the initiation of a conversation, which is the initiation of a lead. Why do we get a lead? In the, why do we generate a lead in the first? Why do we give, drive someone to an opt-in page to get their phone number, to get their email address, so that we can start communicating? And people are initiating communication on social media, and 89% of businesses are ignoring them. So the fastest way to generate leads on social media is start talking to people. Like literally, it is a hyper-leveraged networking environment. And the more we interact and engage, the higher, greater levels of familiarity that we build, and the greater levels of trust. Because when you look at this familiarity principle, on average. It takes, on average, 20 exposures to build familiarity. Now, going back in 2005, it was five exposures, 5.4. Now, we're talking 20 exposures. So you've got to ask yourself the question, how do I get to 20 exposures without pissing people off? Well, first of all, you don't use marketing messages because people hate being marketed to. And the second thing is, every single time you engage in a chat, that is an exposure. And so you could get to 20 exposures within 10 minutes of just having a conversation with someone by the back and forth because every notification is an exposure. Okay, and so for me, the fastest way to generate leads on social media is number one, produce good content that people talk about. That's interesting, tell me more, and then engage in the conversation. Take those conversations off social media so that they then become transactional. But focus, and, it, cause it, and it's interesting because whenever I ask people this conversation, I'm like, what's the goal of using social media? People say sales, and I go, no, that's like saying the goal of going out is to get, you know, get someone into bed. 
it's just not considered to be socially appropriate. And the goal of social media, media is to build connections. It's a connection-driven environment. You know, and those connections are heightened through conversation, through connection. And the more we can connect and converse over th shared values, problems, solutions, the higher levels of trust is built and the easier it is for people to transact naturally. And I think this is where most people go wrong. Most people don't realise that sales in the social environment when done well happen as a natural consequence, not as a forced outcome. You see, traditional marketing methods require you to market to someone based on emotions and you know, psychology so that they respond so that you can then convince them. Social is about feeding them content so over a period of time they become inherently convinced and as a natural consequence, buy. Not because you had to convince them, because they were naturally convinced over time through the demonstration of your expertise, through the, through the publication of your content. That's the easy, and so to me, the reason social is so much more effective from a business and a marketing and a sales perspective is because the leads that we're getting from social media, they're 10 times hotter than any other source. Why? Because they're not coming in cold off a landing page, never hearing from us before, because they're coming in after seeing you know, 10 or 20 videos and they're now familiar with who I am, familiar with the brand, familiar with the business, in some cases familiar with my team. And so they come and they go, I feel like I know you, take my money. It's a much different ball game versus bringing someone in and you get their data, no conversation, got a data, now you try to get into a conversation with them. Now you gotta try and convince them, now you gotta try and prove your expertise. Reverse engineer it and the sales process. You see, most people think their sales process is broken. It's not their sales process is broken. It's just by the time they get the lead, they're still cold. It's like, how do you get, you get your lead so hot that the sales process is really just a formality? The sales process should be a selection process, not a sales process. Whereby you choose whether or not you want to work with that client based on their profile because the assumption is they already want to work with you. It's a very different sales process. Can you talk to, like, to me about why it's so crucial to jump on things now before it's too late? Yeah, look, I remember back in the early 2000s when I first got on Google AdWords, similar scenario, 6% of people were using maybe less. I was getting 5 to $0.08 cent bids all day long for my keywords, you know, 30 to $0.60 cent conversions, uh, whereas now those same bids are like $50 to $75, and those same conversions are not $0.50 cent conversions anymore. They're now $240 to $280 conversions. So here's what we know. You know, what works now will not work forever. And so what we know is right now social media works. What we know right now is Facebook ads work. What we, know, what we don't know is are they going to work in six months from now? Are they going to work 12 months from now? But you've got to ask yourself the question, what are you going to sit there and wonder what's coming next and just sit there and wait for it or are you going to get on to what you know is already working? Uh, and so for me, it's, 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 it's only a matter of time before the landscape shifts again, but the people that are at the front are the ones that are going to see it coming. The people who are at behind are going to, aren't going to be able to change until it's too late because right now we're heading towards a cliff okay with at a, with a rapid rate of knots economically technologically disruptively we're all heading towards a cliff and you've got the, the you've got the early adopters who are sitting at the front and right now the moment they see that cliff they're going to part like fucking moses like the sea like the red sea with moses they're going to part and what's happening is the people that are just doing all the following they're not going to see everyone getting out of the way they're just going to keep moving forward and they're going to run straight off that cliff so the question to you is, where do you want to be sitting? Do you want to be following, okay, so far down the line that you literally walk off the cliff like a lemming? Or do you want to be keeping up with the, the pack at the front so that you can iterate, innovate, pivot and adapt and be agile, you know, when it's required, not after it's too late? Why is 2020 the time to actually go after this? 2020 by name and by nature is all about clarity. And right now, 2020 is going to be creating a, a disproportionate level of disruption in the business space, whereby we will be seeing dramatic shifts in the landscape in a whole range of areas. What we will discover is the people who have the highest level of clarity around their direction and around the strategy and the tactics that are required to survive, they're the ones that are still going to be here. The more 2020 you are, the greater the 2020 vision, the, cl the clearer you are on what has to be done, the plan and the things that need to be executed in the social space, the greater the potential you have for, and again, it's not just domination, we're talking about survival, you know, because some people talk about domination and conquering the world, but what we're going to start to see now in some industries and sectors, yes, there'll be levels of domination and, and thrive, but there's also going to be areas where people are just trying to survive, you know, and so I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens next.
So what's your goal with Fast Growth Summit? Look, my goal with Fast Growth Summit, it's the same every single time. It's to serve people with the information that's required in order to help them, number one, survive, okay, to create a foundation, but number two, then equip them with the tools to not only survive, but also thrive. Because to me, life should never be about just getting by. You know, it should always be about putting the things in place so that we can get by, but then build upon those foundations to be able to thrive to thrive as a business, to thrive as a human, to thrive in our relationships. And so for me, my goal with the Fast Grow Summit is to share that information in a cost-effective way with as many people as possible so that we can bring as many people with us in the journey. Because to me, my intent for this tour is like my intent with content, which is to deliver value. Because here's what I know as a natural consequence. Because some people go, oh, you know, he's only doing this tour because he wants to sell something. And the reality is, I'm like everyone else, I have a product for sale. But please understand the way I do business is the way that I teach business, which is I give so much freaking value in the periods of time that people spend with me, whether it be a 30 second video or a three hour presentation, whereby at the end of that 30 second video or that three hour presentation, their number one dominant question is, wow, if I get this much value in 30 seconds or three hours, what am I going to get if I actually invest some serious time with this guy to be able to learn you know, over a period of days in, when it comes to mastering? And so for me, it happens naturally. I don't need to focus on making sales, and this is what I'm trying to teach people. You don't need to focus on making sales. If you focus on delivering value, if you focus on being of service and being open to receive the gifts of that service, the sales happen naturally. So my goal of the Fast Growth Summit is to deliver an epic level of value that has never before been seen, that as a natural consequence transforms the lives of every single person is there and naturally attracts the right people that want to work with me further.